In this video, I go for a spin in Daily Race A. Daily Race B sees me have some fantastic racing at Spa for Oakersham. And in Daily Race C, well, I get to do it wrong as I rear end the McLaren. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Gran Turismo Weekly Race Guide here in 2024, week 16 and the meme races continue as you can see in the background. Yes, that's a Chaparral 2J. It's flies, I think. It's the fan car, of course. But let's have a look at the race details then because we're racing six laps here at Monza without the first chicane. A good start with a false start check, racing hard tyres and... Of course, we're in that car. So we are going to be flying at this circuit. It's quite a sketchy car, to be honest with you. Quite a sketchy combo, actually, with the first corner. But if you do not like this one, as I imagine a lot of people will not like this one, uh, there are some timestamps there for you. You can jump to race B or race C. However, we did all three races, so you don't necessarily have to, but you get a feel of what the race is all about. Let's jump to it now. Let's have a look exactly what happens. Right then, here we go at the start of the race. Uh, we've got Blind Man in pole. Shadow's in here as well. Shelty is starting behind me. Let's get ready now. Put trash control on one. Hold the handbrake. That's my advice always with these false start checks. It's the quickest way to get going. As here we go. Off we go. Trash control was needed there. Just a teeny tiny bit. Oh, hello. We've already got a crash up ahead. Somebody's been punted off at two. We've gone off. Uh, we've gained two positions. A third position gained already. It's going to be another one. That's four here. Not too bad of a start then as we continue towards turn at number one. The Curva Grande, of course, as we go into here. Then three we go. We just left off a little bit on the inside. Slight tap. I'm trying to keep the car on the circuit. Doesn't quite work. And we go for a spin there. Obviously, I'm not like angry about that because it's just a crazy turn one, to be honest with you. Expect that a lot of the time. A little blue race away up for me there. All good there. I do appreciate it. So we transfer on into lap one then. And we're going to continue on through here. Got yellow flag up. Oh, hello. Somebody else has gone off. Who is... Ah, Shelty. Shelty's gone. Somebody else is spinning. It's a meme race. You're going to have these crazy, crazy accidents as we go into turn number two, technically. The second chicane. I'll be the first, actually, on this layout. But even so, it's very hard to get right because in time trial, you can break much later than you can in the race due to the fuel. So you can see there, I get a 0.5 second penalty. Not the greatest thing in the world, but we take that penalty. And you see Blue Racer coming up here. What I'm actually going to do is just let off here and let Blue Racer go then. That's also just to say thanks for waiting up here as we go into the right hander. We can continue on racing then. So what we will do is fast forward here. And do we get any slipstream? Not really. This car is so fast in a straight line. Slipstream doesn't really benefit you that much. You will gain a tenth or so on the straight, but nothing absolutely massive as we head in towards this chicane once again we're purple then as we go in hello somebody else has been off there who is that it's a brit up ahead can't actually read the name there as we go into the right hander second one blue racers all over the back of them so this is where i was actually still learning the car because i struggled to set a time trial lap before the race even began to be honest with you as we go way too deep at ascari then get it wrong blue racer got it wrong as well and uh, the brit in p8 retakes that position Crichton there as we continue in the slipstream of Blue Race Sense, we're going to go towards that left-hand side. Retake that position. Back up into P9 we go. As we go in towards the Parabolica then, slowing the car down. And hopefully we stay stable here as we continue on through there. Uh, Blue Race, it wasn't quite as stable. And somebody's up here. Oh, Crichton's gone off there. Slowly combining on at Ascari. That's a good way to come on, actually. Well played there to Crichton. As we continue on then, we catch up to Sonic. Sonic is up ahead now as we go into this left-hander. So we get a nice run through. I, know, I started to notice in first gear was better, the way Blue Racer was taking it. So that's what I started to do. So we send it down the inside then, slowing it down. Sonic got a little bit scared and Sonic went off. Sonic, you fell for it again. No. Anyway, we advance to the final lap then. We've caught up to the Spanish driver in P6. Yes, it's P. Steve, as many of you will commentate as we head down towards the Scari then. And we've got a big old run here on the Spanish driver as we go towards that left-hand side. We're trying to overtake the box, of course, in a box as we go into here then. And we break nicely. Good bit of racing there with Papa, actually, as we go through the right-hander and the left. Just being careful on the exit then as we continue on out of there. Let's fast forward towards the final corner. We've got a run here on the Spanish driver. I go towards that left-hand side. I kind of forget I'm in this 2J and I outbreak myself completely here and head off the circuit. So I'm trying to come on nice and easy there. Staying towards the left. They give me just enough room. Beautiful racing there from Papa. And then I burst out laughing because it is funny. You just forget where you are on this combo. You really do. And Sonic said the same. that like He thought he was in a group three at one point. I did as well going to the Parabolica and I finish in P7 in the end. So I don't have that curse. And it is a meme race. If you do do this, just try and have fun where you can. And if you crash, just lap it off. Lap it off. Right, okay. Heading towards the Curva Grande then. 
what you're going to do is you're going to be looking on the left hand side for that 50 board highly advise you just lift for this okay just lift if you are struggling you can start to accelerate mid corner and i will explain that and also demonstrate it as well but the 50 board there lift and turn in that's what i'm going to do here as well so let's do that now lift and turn in i try to maintain some form of speed so i'm keep it around 206 207 you don't have to do that if you're staying above 200 you're doing pretty well to be honest with you just don't try and do it flat because i don't think you can do it flat the 200 board here is your brake marker. I'm braking just before it, actually, because I find that if I try and outbrake myself, I go a little bit too deep. So I'm going to drop to first gear with this one. You can see where the 200 board here is on the chase cam. So I'm dropping down the gears now to first gear. And we cut a little bit here and a little bit there. Now, don't cut too much. You will get track limit penalties. Monza is famous for this. So you do have to be careful. Heading towards the first Lesmo then. So you can look for the 50 board, but I'm looking for the tree on the right hand side. There's a gap just before this in the trees. So I'm looking for this tree. It's very obvious when you're driving. That's what I'm looking for. If you want to use the 50 board, it is there. You're braking before it. And you can see that on Chase Cam as well. You can see that gap a bit more on the right as well. As we go through this first one, what we're looking for here is that orange painted barrier. That is your accelerating marker. So when you start to see this, start applying the throttle. You can see I've just started to go in the throttle now. Because as I say... It's a marker. It's something I use. It's a reference point, and I highly advise you use it as well. Really good marker here at Monza, and I use it in all the cars. Try and bounce the car and exit in second gear. Don't go to first, you'll spin out. Second gear, you might get a bit of oversteer. Just be careful. The tree on the right-hand side, it's the first tree after a big gap. You will notice it. That is my brake marker for this right-hander. There's mode two. And again, stay in second gear. Very easy to go to first and think that's the better way. Second gear is so stable through this corner. Notice how I do it here. Bouncing the throttle a little bit. When I'm straight, I go 100%. Right, we're going to carry on now towards Ascari. We can breathe a little bit, but we are picking up our speed very quickly. This car just accelerates and continues to do so. So what we're looking for here is that 200 board, okay? Now, I'm braking just after the 200 here. I'm not at the top ends where it would be like 210, 215. So literally, just after the 200 board is when we're going to brake. Now, for this, Ascari, you want to be in second gear, but it's going to be a bit sketchy for you. Let me explain. As you go to second gear here, Try and avoid the sausages. The sausages will cause the car to spin out. So that's what I'm trying to do here. And as I go over any form of bump, I lift off to really make sure the car doesn't spin up its wheels. Make sure you do that through Ascari. As we get to the Parabolica, the final corner on the circuit, we're looking for the 150 board here. I'm braking just after the 150 board as I go in. And it's a similar sort of distance, isn't it? I said just after the 200 for Ascari, just after the 150 for Parabolica, but it's a slightly faster corner. So hopefully that logic makes sense. I have to the 150 board here. Second gear as I go into here. And I'm letting the car just bounce itself a little bit. I'm looking for that lamppost on the right hand side, okay? That lamppost there is my accelerating marker. It's the first obvious one that you see on the inside. And I'm going to begin accelerating. But I'm going to begin accelerating at a reasonable, like, increase of throttle there. 50, 75, 100. Notice I didn't go straight to 100. It would spin out. I gradually improved it. And as we head towards the line, that is going to be it in the chaparral. I think it's 22, 5. 20 ones are possible, but have fun trying to do that if you are going to go for it. We jump to race B then, where we're at Spa, Franck Champ once again. Yes, we did it in less than a month ago. We did Spa Group 3. We're back doing Spa Group 3, so a little bit annoying to be honest with you. We're doing full laps here at Spa. It's a rolling start, racing medium tires, and you can adjust the tuning setup there, so suspension, differential, and brake balance. I chose the McLaren GT3 in the background, the McLaren 650S GT3. Because that was one of the fastest last time. He did have a bot nerf. I'll talk about that a little bit after as well. But it's still a very quick car here. And my ghost on the leaderboard is without a setup. Let's jump to the race then. Let's have a look exactly what happens. Right, here we go there. What have people picked? 650S in pole 4C. It's going to Supra. And it, wow, a big mixture there. The Renault I did expect to see more of because that was the fastest at the time. Let's talk about this rolling start first of all. I will say every single time to Gran Turismo and Polyphony Digital... You need to sort out this rolling start. It's a full lap race and we are a second down already. It took us an entire lap to catch up. The guys behind still haven't caught up at the moment. The reason we caught up is because they managed to start having a fight. There's a three lap race for quite a little bit. Well, 25% of the grid, essentially. A three lap race. 25% it's, it's atrocious. It really is atrocious. It needs sorting. It needs solving. And it is a tad bit ridiculous. So a three lap race here at Spa is what I'm going to say. Right, okay, let's get in at this race then as we head towards Lake Home then. We've got action going on up ahead. We've got Blue Racer in the McLaren. We've got Shelty in the Mustang. Brave choice in the Mustang. We'll see what happens as we go through this right hander. Blue Race gets it on the inside then of that Mustang as we head towards the right hander. In we go. Blue Race is just going to tiny bit deep. Slight tap there with Shelty as we continue on through. I was trying to take advantage of that. It doesn't quite work out. I'm pretty sure. Isn't that a V8 supercar livery on that car? 
pretty sure it is. I seem to recognize it for some reason. I've not seen it in a while, though, as we head towards the chicane then here. No, it's not. Sorry, it's not. we're past the chicane. It's the right-hander, and then the right-hander onto the back straight then. We're through here. The McLaren is very quick indeed, and we have a massive run on Shelty then. Shelty goes towards the left, but we're going to get clean on by before Shelty even realizes then. So up into P13 is where we're at then. Still chasing down Blue Racer as we go onto lap number three as we go up our Rouge and Radion, which is flat even in dirty air. You can see that right there. And we've got a big old run on Blue Racer, but McLaren starts even out here. So Blue Racer goes towards the right-hand side, following Blind Man. I'm going to go towards the left, following Mahata up ahead then as we head into the braking zone. Side by side into Lake Home we go, and it's still side by side through the left. We go, beautiful bit of racing here as we head towards this right-hander. Now I'm trying to look for the cutback here if I can do it. Now, Blue Racer knows where I'm going to go. So, go towards the right side. And we're going to still be side by side in here then. As we go through here, Blue Racer slightly taps. Mihata a couple of times there. Up ahead three times as well. Got to be careful of that one. But trying to defend a position at the same time. Very hard position to be in as we go through that left-hander. And we remain in P13 for now. Oh, I was going to say, remain in P13. Blind Man, unfortunately, had a huge accident there in the TCR Porsche and dropped all the way to what I would assume is the back of the grid. It's very unfortunate. I'll look at that one in the bloopers at the end of this video, of course. Um, as we head towards this chicane then, Blue Race looking at the inside of the mouse. They're not going to quite work out here. We have to really slow the car down to avoid hitting Blue Racer as we go through this left-hander. We are having a good race now, but I'd say it's a really short race in the grand scheme of it so there's a yellow flag up ahead oh hello oh, goodbye actually to the german driver who is spinning out of control there also in the mclaren 650s as we go to this right hander blue racer there just runs a bit wider tries to get on the inside but i was just going to unsteer into blue racer so i backed out of that as we go on to the final lap then and we head towards the region radio now here i was anticipating a big old run on both of these drivers so i was trying to plan it accordingly making sure i had a big enough gap to really get a slingshot on both of them because i knew blue racer was going to go for the move but I knew I could get both of them if I tried. So here's what I'm going to do then. I'm behind Mihata right now. Mihata goes towards that right side. Blue Racer is in the middle. We'll go defensive to make sure I don't go there. So I'm going to go down the left-hand side then. Three wide towards Lake Home we go then. In we go. The Mazda back side of it then. They're side by side again with Blue Racer into here. Second time's the charm then. Through we go. I'm going to try and keep it around the outside this time. Can we do it? Not quite. Really good defensive drive there from Blue Racer. And Blue Racer is going to keep that position for now. But I never give up on this. I will never give up when there's a position to be had on the final lap then. What we will do is we will fast forward a little bit here then and see where the action takes us as we continue on towards the chicane. Then in we go. Slowing the car down nicely. I can see more positions up ahead, but we're not close enough really this final section up ahead the blue racer goes off runs wide there i expected dirt on their tires but looking at it now it looks like they stay just on the curve then as we continue on through here a little bit of a wiggle as we go into this right hander so i'm trying to get the run i always short shift to fourth there. i'll explain it in the lap guide as well because it allows you to just get a bit more turning in the mclaren here's the run there now we're gonna have a bit of a race here with blue racer towards the end here of this spa race as we head towards Blanchman side by side. I wasn't giving this up. Blue Racer wasn't giving it up either. Beautiful racer. You see the smile on my face. I love racing like this. I don't care if it's for P9 or not. It's beautiful racing. It really is. We go in towards the chicane. Blue Racer trying round the outside. Still side by side racing. I just understand a little bit there on the exit. Blue Racer nails it to perfection. We head towards the line. And Blue Racer is going to get this one. Really well played to Blue Racer. Fantastic racer. But... I will say this, the rolling start is shocking. It needs fixing. And a full lap race here, it should be five. It really should be five laps. Right, let's talk about a lap guide then. So this is a slightly different bop to what is shown on screen. Okay, so no, sorry. The bop on screen is not what the bop is now. It's got 10 kilograms heavier. The brake markers are still the same. Just keep it that out there and updated. So turn one, 100 board on the left-hand side. You're braking just after this in the McLaren. Depending on which group three car you pick, depends on what you do and also the setup of the car. Remember, the lap that's on the leaderboard right now is stock setup, okay? So if you want to follow the ghost with a stock setup, you know it's possible to still get in the 16s. Erosion Radion completely flat here. Not a problem in the McLaren. Yes, it's 10 kilograms heavier now than what is being shown on this video. It's still the same brake markers. Rev this car to the absolute limits if you are using the McLaren. And as we head towards Lake Home then, I'm looking for the start of the curve there. I'm braking just before it. And this is the same in all different cars, okay? It's still the same even now. The start of the curve there is your brake marker. And that is what I'm using here. 
Right, with Lake Home, you want to literally go on the inside here where the bollards are if you can, and then keep it nice and tight for this left-hander. Get over as far left as possible, then you're going to short shift to third and really clip the inside curb. If you do that, you should have run too wide and you can accelerate through the corner. You have to be careful about running wide there. It can get very slippy on the exit and spin you out. Heading towards this next right-hander then, just before the start of the curb there that I've highlighted, you can just see I've gone on the brakes as well. That is your brake marker. Once again, you're going to want to aim really tight here for this corner. Get in as tight as possible as you go around this corner. Don't go too wide. And you're looking for the third bollard there. The third green strip. If the bollard doesn't exist for whatever reason, it should exist though. So that is your accelerating marker for this corner. You want to begin accelerating when you see that. You can't see the exit. You just have to have trust that that is the marker. You start accelerating and you'll make it around the corner. That's what I start doing here. And I continue on out. You may want to short shift to third if you are struggling with oversteer in particular cars that do struggle with power oversteer. Now, there are gaps in the catch fence there. You can see the catch fence here. I started to brake and I want to turn in. You want to be quite aggressive in certain cars. The McLaren is one of those cars where you need to be aggressive here on this left-hander because you really want to just clip the inside and accelerate out and hope you don't touch the slippy stuff on the outside of the curb. If you do touch it, you're going to go for a spin. Heading down here then towards Puan then. On the left-hand side, the end of the catch fence or the marshals, whichever one you want to use here, are your brake marker for Puan. Now, depending on the car, it will depend on whether you go down two gears, one gear, or how you do this corner. Normally, a dab of the brakes and chuck in is enough. Sometimes you'll want to trail brake if you're after the last couple of attempts, because that will get you the last couple of attempts as we go into here. We're going to continue on through this and accelerating as hard as we can then. And we're going to head up towards the next corner, the chicane. Now, up ahead, you've got the... Uh, gantry there that says spark it the spa from shop you can use that as a marker you can also use the 50 board or the start the curb there as your brake marker on this particular lap i'm going to use the gantry up ahead depending on the car the brakes how it handles will depend on which one you use gantry hitting the top of the screen is normally a better one to start with because you're definitely going to keep on the inside here which is what you need to do to get a nice line for this left hander better to get this left hander right and avoid going on the slippy stuff on the exit Head towards the right-hander then. You've got the big white object there on the right. That's what I normally use as it gets towards the edge of my screen. You can start to use the start the curb there in front of you if you want. But I find that's a bit too late on the brakes. You could use it as a reference point though if you are struggling. And you can see there what we're using as we go into this right-hander. Be careful on exit about going too wide. It's very slippy out there. Now, as you turn into here, we've got the start of the curb on the right-hand side. That is your turning marker. Now, you can do this corner flat in a lot of cars. A lot, a lot, a lot of cars. You do struggle doing it flat, a tiny bit of a lift. Don't fully lift, like literally go to 75% throttle and back to 100. In the McLaren, as I did in the race, what I'm going to do here is I uh, should go to fourth gear. That's what I do actually. I didn't actually show it there for some reason, um, but I did do a slight lift, which is what I was sort of talking about. Once you is flat there, you can see that right here. And we're going to head towards the final chicane. With the final chicane, you've got two markers. Now, I've stopped it right here just because it's easy to see the markers. You've got the billboard on the right side. That's what I use. As I go into the billboard, as the billboard starts to leave the screen, that's my brake marker. You could use the 150 board. Here is exactly where I am braking on chase cam. You can see that. You can see the billboard on the right side. I'm halfway into it right now on the chase cam. That is my marker for this corner. And I'm going to brake towards the outside of the corner. I then want to come back in and cut quite a bit of this first part to give me a better line for the second part. Be careful on exit of power overstay because you will want to overturn the car and you really can't do that. We're going to head towards the line and that's 16.3. I think that's round about what I've got on the lead board now with the new bop. So it is literally identical. We jump to group four then. We're at Dragon Trail Gardens for Daily Race C. Now this does mean we get to do one of my favourite corners on the game. What are we doing here at Dragon Trail Gardens? Well, it's 11 laps. It's a rolling start on the racing medium tyres. A pit stop is required. And once again, tuning is available. Suspension, differential and the brake balance. Now, I chose the Renault Megan Trophy. I actually chose a couple of cars this morning, and I went with that car in the end. It's quite stable in the grand scheme of it on the stock setup. Again, it's a stock setup. My lap time on the leaderboard is stock setup. So, let's jump into the race then. Let's have a look exactly what happens and what to do strategy-wise. Right, here we go then. The final race. Who's in what? We've got a GT by Citroen. That will be very quick here. We've got some alphas in there. But as I said, I chose the Renault Megane Trophy. If you are enjoying this video, do give it a like. Do subscribe to the channel. Stay in touch with all the latest content. We are on this journey to 50k. And we are getting ever, ever closer here as we go into this chicane down here at Dragon Trail Gardens. 
Make sure you straddle the sausage. That's my advice here. Because if you don't, you could go for a spin. As the Jaguar nearly does up ahead there. But does manage to catch it. Now, I'm trying to fix my wheel here. This was the first race of the day. Now, I was trying to work out why it was so heavy. And I realized I've got my Moser settings on here when I was trying to get my Moser to work. So, I'm going to be trying this entire race to sort it out. Now, we've gone down the inside here. Shelty's gone down the inside as well. And we actually gained a lot of positions very quickly there through the hairpin. You can see my smile there and surprise. But... Keeping it tight and keeping it clean, we managed to gain a lot there. So through the quadruple right here, that's one of my favorite corners. If you're wondering what I was talking about in the intro as we head towards the last one. Again, I'm just trying to get a feel for the wheel here because it's too heavy for my liking personally as we continue on through there then. Some of you are going to be like, oh, Tid, you're so weak, you can't use it. And when you see my actual settings, because I think I do show them in this video, you're going to be like, oh my word, Tid, what's the point? Uh, but anyway, have fun with that when we get to it. We tried to get a run on the Lambo. The Lambo's slightly quicker than the Renault Megane Trophy in a straight line here with the Techno Livery, the Apex Twin. And a shout out to you as well. Hello, because we do see you quite a lot in these videos. And you do say hello all the time in the lobbies. So hello to you. Right, Chelsea's trying around the outside here at the chicane. Quite hard to do because I'm going to have the inside for this one and I can cut it where you can't. And we do get the position defended there. And unfortunately, Apex Twin up ahead gets a penalty. You do have to be careful about cutting too much. That's the reason why they're a 0.5 second penalty. Now, Shelty is catching me up in that Scirocco. It's a brave choice to Scirocco. And we'll see how it does in this race. It's up ahead. Somebody's gone a bit deep there in an NS sector, it looks like. And we maintain the position. Actually, Shelty's just lost the position. there to Wumble. Wumble with a move around the outside. Really well played with that one then. As we continue on up here. There's still action going on up ahead. Then Tajo Boss is struggling a little bit here. Apex Twin there. Just struggles with a speed down. We're going to set it down the inside. Very common move to do here. You'll see this a lot. And you do have to be prepared for it. Apex Twin was very well prepared for it then. We've got Shelty on the inside here as well. It's a reverse Moses maneuver. The Lambo gets mugged here. And look. We trade a Lambo for a Volkswagen Scirocco. Shelty made that work somehow. Some way. What a move by Shelty then. As we continue on through then that. Volkswagen does have a quicker top speed than this car. We are going to have to fall in line here. Now, I was actually getting a bit frustrated with my wheel as well here because I couldn't get the proper feel that I'm used to as I go through this left-hander. So what I'm actually going to do, folks, is I'm actually going to pit into... or go into the pits here early. Pit into the pits, as I was about to say. Uh, and we're not going to change tyres. Because I noticed the tyre wear wasn't that significant. The fuel isn't that significant. I was hoping to press pause in there and be able to change it, but I couldn't. I'll come out here in P15. The German there goes ahead of me here. It was like Immer Gleichgut. I'm not actually too sure with that one uh, as we head down here then and i just i'll break myself a teeny tiny bit i was going straight on with the braking out i was expecting the mclaren to turn in so it's completely my fault but the mclaren turned in really late for that corner and again i, I was expecting them to turn in so it wouldn't happen eventually here then we do get to change the control sensitivity and talk yeah we're down to two two yes that is what i use folks that is what i use Right, let's advance further on then. Lap number four. Sonic's coming out the pits here. Now, I was hoping to try and go around the outside of Sonic, but it's so hard to do that on this corner that, yeah, I failed. I failed miserably. So, we are going to have a fight with Sonic then as we go into this left-hander then, halfway into the lap. Sonic's going to run a bit too wide there. Very common mistake to do here. Sonic's actually going to let me go then. I appreciate that, Sonic. And I do put my thumbs up mid-corner for some absolute unknown reason. What a pleb I am with that one as I continue on then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one hand on those steering wheel tips because that seems to work out. So up ahead then, we catch up to the German driver who hasn't been inconvenienced too much there with my mistake earlier on. And we get a good run on the exit of the hairpin then. A really good run on the German driver. We're going to go towards that inside then. And it looks like we are going to get this position and go up to P12, P11 apparently as Womble is in the pits. And anybody coming out the pits? No. So it's just a clean pass then. Somebody's really far up ahead just coming out the pits. So P11 it is for now then. So, we advance a lap later. And up ahead, unfortunately, someone's gone for a spin. That's Tajo Boss. Just clips the outside curb. Goes for a spin there. And we are up into P10. And that had the greatest race there, to be honest with you. Let's fast forward here. Anybody coming out the pits? Yes, we've got two cars coming out the pits. We've got... Uh, who's that? Hayes too fast for you. And we've got Shelty. And I wanted to get past Shelty. But annoyingly, we haven't. Because that Shiroko is going to be struggling at the end of stints. It really will with the tyre wear. Hodgson's coming out the pits now then. We can try and go around the outside of Hodgson. You are going to have to be careful if a car is leaving the pits. They will have the inside line. You are going to have to go around the outside. The ghost could unghost at any moment. We've seen that before in a video or two. And you do have to be careful. Now, I was trying to figure a way past Shelty for the remaining laps. And here we are on the final lap. Because that Volkswagen is very good at accelerating. It's also quite good at handling. I was hoping to scare Shelty into a mistake here down in towards the hairpin. Now, Shelty doesn't go too deep there. Not deep enough for me anyway as I continue on out of that corner. So, Shelty stays ahead of me 
And now that <laughs> I just realized what I said as I go through the left hander and in towards the right. What can we do versus Chelsea? That Volkswagen will struggle on corners. You've seen that up ahead then. We somehow have to get a run through a corner and maximize the speed. And that's what I'm going to try and do here. Again, I'm going to try and scare Shelty into a mistake. Shelty doesn't fall for it by any stretch of the imagination as we go through here. If you want to look and understand what a Scirocco looks like, we're seeing it right here. Look how close we are then. Trying to get the run out of the corner. We just can't do it here then. So we're going to have one final chance now. It's a choice of do we send it or do we focus on the exit here? on this last lap that is the question what we're going to do then Chelsea goes defensive so we're going to go around the outside but it should be a good run on the exit then here's what's going to happen we go for that run we really should have been a bit better on the throttle but Chelsea was in the wrong place at the wrong time for us to really go for it you can see that I'm pushing I'm pushing but again we just lose out at the line here two races we've done that but a brilliant race with Chelsea we come home in p5 which I'm pretty pleased about in the grand scheme of it there's a lot of pace to be had here and I will talk about tuning in a second and this race as well. Let's talk about the lap guide first of all. This is a bit of a stock setup. You can see the bop on the right hand side then that we use for this lap. So turn number one, the tree on the left hand side, the last tree on the left hand side is your brake marker. You're going to want to trail brake into this corner. Okay. And you're really going to want to make sure you do hit the apex on this corner. If you don't, you're going to understeer off a little bit. So that's what I'm going to try and do here. So notice there, trail braking all the way towards the corner. I'm trying to clip this curb, okay? And the second I see the orange painted barrier in the distance, that's when I accelerate. But as long as I've hit the curb, if I'm on the curb, it's going to pull me around a little bit. There's a little bit extra grip here. It's really good for you. So hit the curb, see that, and then accelerate, and you should make it around the corner absolutely fine. We can then breathe a little bit and use one of our normal markers then for this left-hander. So you've got a choice of three. You've got the start of the curb the orange painted barrier, or the 100 board. It will depend on your setup and the car you are using. And you may actually even want to break a little bit later than this. So whichever one you use, they're the three markers that are available to you. Very nice to use indeed. I'm using the painted orange barrier in the Megane Trophy on stock setup. I drop the seconds, get a bit of rotation, then back up to third. Straddle the sausage there. Make sure the sausage is in the middle of the car. The Renault Megane Trophy actually is more stable over the sausage compared to other cars. The Supra, for example, was a bit oversteering. That was the first car I tried here this morning. So heading towards the hairpin then, on the right side, the tree. That is what I'm using as my brake marker. That is my official brake marker. I've highlighted the curb and the 100 board if you want to use them instead. But the tree, as it hits the edge of my screen, is my brake marker for this hairpin. Now with this hairpin, you actually want to keep it nice and tight here. You don't want to go out wide. You just lose time if you go out wide. So I'm using all the curb on the inside and I want to accelerate as early as I can. Be careful power overstay in some cars. I suffered a little bit in the Renault Megane Trophy. I suffered a little bit more in the Toyota Supra. Keep it over towards the left-hand side then, and you've got the orange barrier or the start of the sand there, okay? I'm braking just before that. You can see I've just started braking now because I want to abuse the track limits a little bit on the right-hand side. I want to cut a little bit more than normal to make sure the car gets round and I've got a good line then for the left-hander. That's what I'm going to try and do here. I'm going to cut as much as I can here, try and get it round, and then I've got the tree or the orange barrier on the right-hand side. These are your brake markers. Now, you are going to want to drop a gear in a lot of cars for this corner what you normally do anyway so you've got the tree and the orange painted barrier there so as you get to them as they hit the edge of your screen hit the brakes drop a gear and turn in this corner you've got to be so careful on the exit okay so you notice i'm just being careful of the throttle if you go over that curb the car could literally just ride the curb and spin you out the second it hits the ground again as we head towards my one of my favorite corners in gran turismo the quadruple apex corner the black gray mark Whatever it is there ahead of you, that is my brake marker for this corner. Now, you're going to, you, what you're going to do is you're going to hit, then miss the next apex. You don't have to hit that one. And then you want to hit and hit the last two, okay? So it's hit, miss, hit, hit. Hit, miss, hit, hit. Try and remember that one, folks. It's a bit like Nürburgring, but I can't even remember what it is. What, hit, miss, hit, hit, miss, hit, or miss, hit, miss? Can't remember what it is. On that one, hit, miss, hit, hit. The final corner then, the hairpin. You've got the orange painted barrier. That is normally my brake marker, the curb, or the 100 board, depending on setup and car. Now, for this one, you want to break in a straight line longer than you think. Don't turn in too early. You can't see the apex initially, but stay in a straight line. And then when you start to see it, then turn in. If you turn in too early, you're going to go way too deep. And it's just going to cost you so much time into this one. So you go out wide and then come back and you should have a straighter line on the exit then. This is a 136.8, definitely 135 is possible here with a setup as well. So do keep that in mind. That's going to be it for this one, though. Let's jump to some bloopers. Right, who's up first? It's the start of Daily Race A. So let's see this. And no traction control on the wheel spin. And take out Hugh Hattrick there. So the Italian really should have waited up after that one. It is it really your fault there. You should have waited up. Right, okay, here we go. Blue Racer. What happened with Blue Racer? Ah, I see, it's the tiniest bit of throttle there. It just taps me onto the grass there. So yeah, it was Blue Racer's fault. But again, look at this. Beautiful sportsmanship. Waits up for me there. I appreciate that. 
So we've got Shelty behind there, not watching that. The slice of the taps. So, well, Shelty feels sorry for me and goes for the same spin there, it looks like. <laughs> we'll play Shelty. Right, okay, here we go. We've got the Italian then. Now, we did see spin at the exit of Ascari. So how did they spin? So they went a bit deep there into the first part. Through the left we go. On the throttle, a bit of wheel spin. On the slippy stuff. And a big old spin as well. And so that explains that one. Now, we also saw Shelty do a similar thing. So what happened to actually Shelty? Just control there. Spin it up and spins you out there, Shelty. Although the barrier helped you there. Head on the impact. Got you straight and true very quickly. So we're on board the leader now. Lap number two. Up to the leader. Shadow. In towards left and right we go. On the gravel. And another spin. Oh, a bottle job that one, Shadow. A bottle job there. Right. What's next? And about a one here. Sonic goes way too deep. So this is what Sonic was on about, I guess, with the GT3 braking. Way, way, way too late on the brakes. Goes for this exit road over here, which is probably a good chance, to be honest. I did expect a reset when I watched this, but uh, no, it didn't happen. Go back on board Sonic then. I'm going on the inside here. Outbreaks yourself a little bit more then. I scared you into that, I think. And unfortunately, Sonic goes off again. So let's jump to Daily Race B now. And this was Blind Man. So into the left we go. Oh, gets on the slippy stuff. We always say avoid the slippy stuff. I mentioned it in the track guide. That's the reason why it goes for a big old spin there, does Blind Man. Right, we're going on board the McLaren then. Oh, the slippy stuff again. Understeers off, tries to throw it to come back on and goes for one of the slowest spins I've ever seen. Look at this. It's like slow motion. I should put it on slow motion and make it go even slower. All right, Daily Race C. This isn't actually a blooper. This is, well, have a look at the overtake that Shelter did. So gets the outside of Womble then and on the Apex Twin then. And Apex Twin really judges that well to say what was happening. Really well played to Apex Twin. Shelter with an unbelievable move and yeah, brilliant racing from everybody involved in that one. Now we're going on board at Womble and you can check out Womble on YouTube, of course. We go into this right hander. There's a lot up ahead. Uh, oh, Banzo on the sausage. Goes to a spin there. Tries to correct it. And a big old spin. There's a lot had dirt on their tyres already as well, I believe. So unfortunately, a big old crash. Now, Zalar did wait up for Womble there, so that's good sportsmanship. Here's my unfortunate accident there. And you can see as well how wide they stayed there. If you looked at the Honda ahead of them, I was expecting the McLaren to do that, so it is on me though. So I'm the car behind and I break myself. Spinning towards this left hander then. Oh, Zalar takes. The last brilliant sportsmanship in this race. Waited for one ball earlier on and then avoids contact with Bahamas there. Brilliant racing from the last brilliant sportsmanship. Shout out to you. Big shout out to you. And I appreciate racing with you, mate. That's going to be it though for this weekly race guide. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, as always, do give it a like. Do subscribe to the channel to stay in touch with all the latest content. But that's going to be it for me, folks. A video check out there, including some extreme tuning, which will work on daily race C. But I'll say that is it for me. Big thank you for watching and I hope to see you in another video live stream again very soon.